Hey, what's up guys? My name is Josh and thank you very much for stopping in today. Today we're going to be taking a look at the unboxing and the first impressions of Empire Ears new IEM, the Odin. So the box itself is pretty typical. Uh, there's nothing real special about here. It just kind of showcases the, the actual headphones and all of their glory. But then out of the box, you should slide out probably the coolest headphone case I think I've ever seen. So this case is entirely metal. It's got a very loud, would you imagine unscrewing this in like a quiet office? You're just sitting there, it's just Anyways, the machining on it is exceptional. It's a very beautiful case. It's got a microfiber towel and a silicone layer on the inside, so it's not gonna scratch up your headphones or anything. A combination of like the way it looks and the way it feels, it seems like something that you would get like an Aston Martin key in. It's like, that. that's what this should come in. So Aston Martin, you're welcome. Talk to the Empire Ears about <laughs> making that happen. But then you have the earbuds themselves, which are big beautiful and pretty bold. Uh, so they got this really colorful outside scheme. Uh, these are actually physically bigger than the Sony Z1Rs, uh, but substantially more comfortable. They're lighter weight and they also have uh, curved edges all around and everything's super well polished and everything fits really nicely. So one thing that immediately stood out to me as kind of a weird design choice, but not necessarily bad, just uh, a little bit different than what I was anticipating, was the cable design. It's kind of got these right angles on the hook itself. Now I thought that I would initially feel this, but it doesn't actually seem to be a problem for me, but I haven't seen this kind of squared off look before. Now, speaking of the cable, you can get this in 2.5 or 3.5 millimeters. Uh, it's relatively uh, a short braided cable with this little uh, Empire Odin logo on uh, the center, which is like this triplicate triangle design. It's fairly nice, uh, it's actually metal, it's pretty cool. Now one possible thing about this balance cable that I have here, the actual connection, it has a like a big grip area which is gonna potentially make it a little bit hard to fit in certain amps or if you have something like a phone, I'm not sure about the 3.5 millimeter version if it's the same, but if you have like a phone with a case, this may not fit in between the case. So that might be something to, to kind of concern yourself with. Luckily, even though this is a really nice cable, if it doesn't happen to fit or you need a longer one, these two pin connector cables are pretty easy to find. So in classic Empire fashion, these have a ton of drivers in them. They actually have 11 drivers in them. Uh, these have two base drivers, one for sub frequencies and one for just standard base frequencies, five balance armature drivers, two low mid, two mid, and two mid high. And then they have four electrostatic drivers. And then on top of that, they have a seven way crossover, which is a lot going on in such a little package. Um, we've actually seen the setup between uh, dynamic balance armature and electrostatic when we looked at the fur M5s. So clearly there's a lot of uh, not only technology, but a lot of trial and error that goes into making something like this. Like, like even the outside design looks incredibly complicated. And I feel like I'm gonna try my best to capture the essence and the depth of what this looks like. I don't know if I'll be able to do it, but I'm gonna try. Uh, it's just a very impressive looking IEM and on a spec sheet, it's also quite impressive. Now there are some interesting notes on the design. Uh, there's this five hole stem uh, that goes into your ear that is actually completely connected with the rest of the chassis. Uh, it doesn't have this uh, hook or lip for the ear tips to grab onto. It's actually a fairly wide stem. And when you're just looking at this, it doesn't seem like it'd be all that comfortable, but it, it actually is. Uh, if you use small enough tips, it doesn't seem to be a big problem. Um, but if you have really small ear canals, it might be a little bit concerning, but I'm talking about really small. And then there's these three, what look like vent holes kind of near the top uh, that kind of face on the top side of the actual IEM. So this is actually a very different headphone than another Empire Ears headphone that we looked at a while ago, which is the Zeus. Um, and that was kind of a mass drop collaboration. That also had, I think, 
a large number of drivers. I think it was like 15 or something like that. It was, it was nuts. But that headphone had a very different style of chassis. It had this metal stem for your ear and then like this plastic body design. Um, also a three pin I think was on that as well. But what I find interesting is not only the difference in build philosophy, but the difference in sound. So the Zeus was like a, a top end monster. It was just a lot of details, a lot of room information, a lot of uh, crispy, crackly notes, and it was very good for that. And it had the, the speed to it that very few other headphones can reach, uh, but it did lack that kind of low end lush sound that something like a Z1R has. Now, lush is exactly the word that I would use to describe the Odin. And this is what I find intriguing because it's like a stark contrast from another headphone they make. So they're very capable of swinging in various directions as a company. And that's kind of cool. Now the Odin itself, and I haven't put too many hours on it, is a very smooth, uh, easy going headphone. It's something that I could legitimately listen to for probably eight hours if I really wanted to. Like I could do a full work day in these and they're comfortable enough to where I don't think it'd be a massive issue for comfort, uh, but the sound is smooth enough to not be fatiguing, but still give you a very high end sound. Um, I'll get more in depth in terms of the sound quality uh, when I actually you know, burn these in a little bit and really sit down to do the review and find out how they stack up against other headphones because I'll have a lot more to say. Now as of right now, and I don't mean this is a bad thing, so definitely don't take it that way. I find this to be a very unproblematic sound. Uh, nothing stands out and grabs your attention in a negative way. It's all very well controlled. Uh, the vast majority of the frequency spectrum seems to be there. Uh, the sound stage and imaging is very good. The bass response is exceptional. There's a lot to love and so far very little to dislike about the Odin. Uh, but we'll see what the full review has to offer. So until then, stay tuned, subscribe if you like the video, like it if you like the video and comment any questions that you have and I'll see if I can cover them in the review. Okay guys, thank you very much for watching. My name's Josh, signing off.